Sounds like we're chasing a bit Don't play the street. <laughs> the lease will be taken about. These fans, they're not too... Are they... As I put them slower, they're fine. This lesson this morning will be slightly strange. I know it's Mother's Day and everybody expects one to be talking about Mother's Day, but we also know it is a man-made institution, so we don't really talk about Mother's Day and Christmas Day and all that. But to our mothers, I hope you have a great day. This lesson is a little bit different. We've all, I take it, went to the polling station the other day to vote for the country. And I stood in this row and I couldn't help but think, what if this is Judgment Day? So I'm going to be going through some questions <clears throat> and the questions are about me, not about you. So you can sit back, relax, no fingers will be pointed. But it was a little bit of a haunting experience standing there and seeing all the different people lining up, those that are first, those that are way last. There were some people that came in from the side and sort of went in the front there for reasons. Some were a little bit older than others, they couldn't stand long. And it was almost a case of, you know, the scriptures going through my mind, those that are first will be last, those that are last will be first. A lot of scriptures went through my mind, standing in this queue. There was a gentleman on the side, we're all standing, and he was a jovial fellow. And he was talking and they were laughing and all of a sudden, you know, the, the door sort of opened up and this man came with a piece of paper and he went into the front there with his ID book and he went there and they called some people out to the side and he presented them this piece of paper and the verdict was, sorry sir, it's the wrong document. You will have to go and Commissioner of Oath, have it stamped, whatever the case may be. Sorry, but you cannot go through. Then there was a lady that came from the back. I had to get into a fight with her. She was not small. But she was bossy. Came all the way from the back. And we heard this rumbling coming along as she's talking. And eventually she came past us, we were quite far in the front, Robin was right in the front there. And the words of man, I will show them what they have to do. This waiting in the queue is nonsense. I'll see that it starts happening. Have you met people like that in life? The bossy type. In others, in standing in the queue, which is the right thing to do, I will ignore that and I will get the thing rolling. She went to the front, shout, well, you know, nothing happened. She could change nothing, but on her way back, she says, now ah, things are happening, as if she made it all happen. And then you get the quiet time. There were some gentlemen, ladies next to us, we're just talking quietly, humble. And I couldn't help equating what was happening with Judgment Day. There are so many people in this world today. You know, I will tell you what's going on. I will tell you how to run the church. God, I will tell you how to run your word. Then you get the ones who sneak in. They try and sneak in. Remember the passage in the scripture where this man came into the wedding? He didn't have the right clothes on, but he tried to sneak in. And the document said, sir, you cannot vote. You don't belong here. I look 
back. There were wealthy people, millionaires. There were poor people. There were just ordinary people. But at that moment in time, everybody became equal. It really didn't matter whether you had a red Ferrari standing outside or you came in a donkey cart. At that moment in time, everybody was equal. It didn't matter what you owe. And so I thought, what if the crowd, as they get to Mercy's Gate, Judgment Gate, and we might find that we're a little bit unsure of our lives and, and we ask God and God just looks at us and then we get a little bit more anxious and we plead with God and God just looks at us and eventually our hearts break and we, we cry with tears. Lord, let us in. And the Lord said, many shall come to me on that day. And say, Lord, look what we did for you. We did it. We did all these things. We cast out demons. We performed miracles. We went to church every day. I sat in my seat every single Sunday I was there. And like this gentleman, the documents were wrong. Go away from it. I couldn't help but thinking of all these things going through my mind. Judgment Day. We read the scripture earlier and it might have sound very negative. But you know, I can imagine Christ standing on the rooftop looking at the people, all of us, this long queue. And he says, I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not hear. And you did evil in my sight, and you chose that which I did not delight in. And so here come the questions I asked myself. Whether you can identify that I don't know. But here's the question. The first question I thought when I approached God and He says to me, Daddy, I want to know from you today. I almost want to, let me put it in reverse a little bit. Let's say I came to a tribunal where it was earth judges sitting at the table before I go through the door to God, I first come before earth's judges. And they say to me, Did you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your strength? This is the question that the table poses to me. I read in Matthew 6, 24, one of the oldest, script, oldest scriptures, well known that we've read so, so many times. But all of a sudden, it started coming into my mind, standing in the skew, waiting to vote, waiting for judgment. <clears throat> 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This is what the table said to me. And they must make a judgment call. And so my, my life is put on a screen, and they turn around and they look at my life. And then I have to say yes or no, dead. Daddy loved the Lord his God with all of his heart, all of his mind, all of his soul, all of his strength. And I thought to myself, am I guilty? Am I guilty? 
the second question came to me. Or that they asking me now. How much time did I set aside to get to know God better? This is the day. This is judgment day. And they asked me, how much time did you set aside for God to get to know Him better? I'm standing in the road. And these, I need to answer these questions. And now these scriptures come back to me as I'm standing and I'm looking at the people. And these questions, these scriptures come back to me. And it says in James 4, 8, it says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. And I remember them. I remember that scripture, and I think to myself, did, did I draw near to God? Or was it with the first question, I was serving mammon. I was serving my birds, my dogs, my hobbies, my work. And I didn't spend enough time with God. Are they going to mark a yes or a little cross? Am I guilty? Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek His kingdom and His, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. And I stood there and I thought, Have I? Have I seeked God's kingdom and His word? Have, have I really done that? First Timothy 4.15 says, Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them. So that your progress may be evident to all. Will this earthly judgment seat Will they see with my life on the screen? Will they see that the progress that I've made is it evident? 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to prove yourself approved to God as a workman who would not need to be ashamed handling accurately the word of truth. Am I guilty? I honestly stood there, you know, talking to the people, but inside I was wondering if this is judgment day and I was going to go into this hall and there's a panel of earthly judges and they asked me this question Did I spend enough time with God? Would I be guilty? From there, I would have to go to God's hall. But I first have to pass this test. Question three. Have I treated others during my time on earth as God has treated me? Has Richard maybe done something to me in the past? And I hold a grudge against or he's treated me in a bad way and so I treat him or others in the world. Have I treated others in the world the way that God has treated me? Luke 6, 27, 38. I'm just going to read. You know, it says, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. If you're hit on the cheek, turn the other cheek. We know the scripture. And then we get to verse 31 and it says, and just as you want men to treat you, treat them in the same way. Am I guilty? Do I treat you better than when I treat somebody outside of the church? Am I guilty of having favoritism that I treat my family better than when I treat my neighbor. Am I guilty of that? Question four. Have I forgiven others as God has forgiven me? I went through a long, uh, I 
went through. I went a long time. I went through something. Somebody did something to me many, many, many years ago. And for many years, I held a grudge against this person. I found it difficult to forgive him. I was still at school. And he belittled me. And he was unfair to me. And I walked with this grudge for many, many, many years. And I think to myself, I most probably, if I go to the earthly judges, have all the right to bear a grudge against this man. And I think to myself, how did God, how did He treat me? Jesus Christ came to earth. He could have bore a grudge against me the way that I've treated Him. But has He? Matthew 18, sorry, Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, For if you forgive men for their sin, their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. I sat with a problem. It was easy for me to forgive somebody that I love, the church. I love my, I love my brothers and sisters in the church. That would be easy. But this gentleman wasn't in the church. I found it easy not to forgive him. God says to me, son, if you do not forgive others, I will not forgive you. And a big decision had to be made. Matthew 18, 21, 22 says, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? We know the answer. The Lord said, I did not say up to seven times. I said 70 times seven. And so I stand before the earthly tribunal and these, these thoughts come into my mind. Have I matured as a Christian? Do I forgive others? Do I forgive my wife? Does my wife forgive me, my children, my friends? We go to... <laughs> We're going to read in a minute when I stand before the throne of God. And I'm hoping, remember I'm still standing in the queue. I first got to go through the earthly tribunal. I've got to get a yes tick, not a cross. What would happen if they say to me, Danny, you cannot, you cannot advance. Because your lifestyle has shown different to what the Word of God says. Am I guilty? I've asked Ryan to change these two around. Luke 18, 9 to 13. My next question, which would be what? Question 5. Am I truly humble? Am I truly humble? We read about it in the Word. We read about it. We know about it. We know the story about the Pharisee and the tax gatherer. And the, and the Pharisee, which could be me, because I'm in the church. I'm in God's church. This is the church of Christ. The Bible says so. And yet I can look at others and I can judge. And God says, uh oh, uh oh. You have no right to judge. And if you're going to have that attitude, then you've got the same attitude as this man that looked at the tax gatherer and said, I'm so thankful I'm not like him. I'm so thankful I'm not like Robert. God says to me, son, think carefully what you are saying. I love this part that says verse 13. 
But the tax gatherer standing some distance away was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven but was beating his breast saying, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Have, have I shown a life of humbleness? When I'm coming through that door into, we know this is the building is not God's church. We know that. We are the church. But does my, does my attitude when I come in, is it an attitude that I love to be with God's people? Have I put others before me in life? Knowing that I don't want Him to be first. But I also know that God sees it when I put somebody else first and I put myself second. God sees it. But man and Satan, we don't want it that way. I want to be first. I stood there in the screen. I thought to myself, how are this earthly tribunal, the judges, how will they find me? Will they think of me as a humble man? If you had to think of somebody else in the congregation except yourself, oh, let's put it that way. Think about yourself right now. You're sitting there. I'm standing here. How does anybody else see us sitting where you are right now? If I had to ask Pamela about Jackie or whoever, what would you say about her? Is she he? Are they humble? What would be the answer? And then my life is flashed on the wall again. And the tribunal loosened my life. And I look at them hoping that they will see he's a humble man. And I see their faces might just not show what I was hoping for. And I ask myself, am I guilty? Am I guilty of arrogance? Am I guilty of judging other people? Am I guilty of seeing myself just a little bit better? You know, somebody comes off the street, not dressed very well, maybe didn't use soap for a while. And they come and sit in our congregation. Do I ask them how are they? Or do I move away from them? And I don't want to be associated with them. Am I guilty? I come to my last question. Am I worthy? Am I worthy of God's kingdom? That was the... Excuse me. That was the question... With all these questions going through my mind, and I know there are lots of other questions we could ask ourselves. And eventually I stood there and I thought, am I worthy of God's kingdom? What would the tribunal say? I was hoping, I thought of all different answers, and then this scripture came to mind. Revelation 3, 4 says, But you have a few in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And I thought, God, am I one of them? Am I one of those that you spoke about in your book? That there are some who are worthy and they will walk with me. Am I one of them? Philippians 13, sorry, Philippians 1, verse 27 says, Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And I stood there. And of course, everything inside of me was saying, Yes, Lord, I do love you with all of my heart, my 
myself in my mind, in my state. Lord, I've tried to teach, uh, work with others as I would like them to work with me. Lord, yes, I think I'm humble. I think I'm worth your kingdom. But I had to hear first what the earthly judges would have said. And I'm not going to say what they said. Because maybe I didn't want to hear what they said. <coughs> maybe they were going to say, you are guilty. You might not like it. You might not like to hear that you thought you loved the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. You thought that. But your lifestyle you thought you were a humble kind of person. You thought all these things. And I really do. And it did. And they might have come and said, You failed the test. And I stood there. And I thought to myself, What is Judgment Day? And so I stood at the throne of God. Revelation 20, 11, 12, and 15 says, And I saw a great white throne, and Him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, be standing before the throne. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the book according to their deeds. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I went to the polling station to go and vote. And a strange thing happened. They couldn't find my name. They couldn't find my name. And I said, well, but I registered. You will never find me anywhere else in the world on a Sunday morning in a church. I was baptized. I'm a member of Christ's church. My name should be in the book of life. And the lady went and said, Sir, I can't find your name. And I thought to myself, how will I feel? How will I feel if I stand before God one day and this exact situation came along and God says, but son, I can't find your name. You failed the test. How would I feel? How would you and I feel at that moment when we spent our whole lives in the church? I know I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But you know, I thought to myself, why this scene came into my mind, I don't know. Have you ever seen a puppy, a little dog, a little puppy, when it's scared? And it trembles. And it shakes. It is petrified. John, in Revelation chapter 1, John stood before Christ. John knew Christ. He walked with him for three years at least, looking at all and everything at that. How great the heavenly kingdom is and that moment in life. And so the worldly tribunal says, 
Sorry. God goes through that door. It's a little cross. How lost would I feel? That's the bad news. Here comes the good news. At that moment in time, I remembered Jesus Christ's words. And it's that Jesus Christ stepped back into my life, although we know that His Spirit is inside of us, but just to pull the story together, Christ stepped into my life, Matthew 19, 26 says, and looking upon Him, Jesus said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, but with me, all things are possible. Remember the Lord's time that we did with Leroy, impossible, I am possible. I stood there in this row thinking, I could have spent my whole life being lost if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. And only because of Jesus Christ I have hope. The earthly tribunal found me guilty. God's word finds me guilty. First John 2 1 says, My little children. Hey, eh? you like that? My little children. That's how God sees us as our, as His little children. My little children, I'm writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So I'm saying to you right now, if we look at our lives, we could never love the Lord our God as much as what we should. I don't care who you are. We could never be as humble as what we should be. I will also say this, that I, there have been people in my life that I haven't really forgiven. It's a fight. I know the Bible says I must forgive. But I don't want to. Because they treated me badly. But it Something happened, I would like them to treat me well. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And so I stand before the throne of God like a little puppy. But I'm not frightened anymore. Because right next to me stands Jesus Christ, my advocate. The Son of God. He looks at my life like the tribunal looked at my life and found me guilty, unworthy, unworthy. Christ says, but I died for him. And all that unworthiness I washed away. And I know his heart. I know his heart. He made many mistakes, but there was integrity there. And in his, his own or her own simple little way. Father, they tried to please us. Allow him, allow them to enter. What do you think the father's going to say? It's his son. It's his son asking him to allow us into his kingdom. And so I finish off with this. 2 Corinthians 9 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Brothers and sisters in Christ. If it was up to 
if it was up to earthly judges, if it was up to the world, you know, we'd make it. We would make it because they would see the wrongs in our life. God sees the good in our lives. And He takes the bad things and He just washes it away. He says, that my son. This is my kind of people. Someone from the outward would say, how can you say this is your kind of people? I know all their faults. And God says, I know. But they have something which I love. And that's integrity. There's something about, they just, they are, they want to please me. Sometimes they make mistakes. But they want to please me. They're acceptable to me. If it wasn't for that un indescribable gift, you and I sitting here right now with all of our sins. Now we know sins are washed away. We know that every day our sins get washed away. We do the Lord's table in memory of what Christ has done for us. And our sins are kept being washed away. Jesus has that incredible love for you and for me that we cannot describe. If it wasn't for that, we would be lost. That's the great news. That's the hope. So let the world come with what they may. If my Christ, my advocate stands next to me, and there's a little bit of apprehension from my side, and I look at him, and I see a smile. Don't worry, I've got it covered. I've got it covered. And he looks at his father and says, Father, it's one of mine. What do you think the father's going to say? Let's go. Let's stand and sing.